Black Bear's Picnic Chapter 6 The Headquarters Part 1 After years of silence from Crafty HQ, Ethan had received a mysterious letter inviting him to a personal meeting with the CEO of the company. After hours on the road, him and Version Zero finally arrive at the address. They pull up into a parking lot late into the evening. In front of them stood a large tower building which had a huge neon sign mounted onto it that read, Crafty HQ. Alongside it was the usual grinning face of Crafty the Bear. Directly next door was a Crafty's Craft location, which appeared much bigger and modern than the original one that Ethan worked at. God, what have we gotten ourselves into? Let's just tackle him head on. You ready? Here, you should probably put this on. Ethan pulls out a large grey cloak and drapes it over version zero, covering up most of his body and head. <laughs> this used to be my dad's, but it was way too big for him. <laughs> they both walked across the parking lot and threw a pair of automatic sliding doors at the entrance. They entered into a large reception area, which had a dark red carpet, along with chairs lining the wall as a waiting area. Paintings of Crafty the Bear, in various styles and forms, covered the walls. In front of them sat a receptionist behind a grey curved office desk. She appeared very focused, typing away on a computer in front of her. Um, excuse me. Hello, sir. What can I do for you today? Uh, I was invited here by Sam McCoy through this letter. She quickly glances over at version Zero, whose face was obscured by his large hood. Uh, yes, you have a special appointment with Mr. McCoy. Just one moment. Take this. Just down there to your left is the elevator. Use this keycard to go up to the top floor, and somebody should be there to escort you to him. Okay, thank you. <sighs> I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. Ethan selects the 12th floor on the elevator's control panel as version zero reaches out and places his hand on Ethan's shoulder. Thanks. I'm at least glad that you're here, version zero. I don't know if I could do this alone. Here we go. As the elevator doors open, they find themselves in the small lobby area, with more seating dotted around the place. Even more painting and pictures of Crafty the Bear cover the walls, as well as trophy cases displaying a multitude of plaques and awards. A lavish red carpet stretched forward, leading to a large double door. Alongside it was a sign that read, Sam McCoy. CEO of Crafty HQ. That's when Ethan realized that they were not alone. You again. Welcome, Ethan. It's amazing to see you after such a long time. It's surprising that this is your first time here, considering that we've known each other so long. Crafty HQ will be sure to take good care of you. Why am I not surprised that you're here? And why was I called here? Why do you still need me? You're asking the questions to the wrong person. My boss should be ready in just a moment. Well then, are you still at Crafty's Crafts? Well, the original one where we first met was permanently shut down the same night that you <laughs> stole our suit. As Chris says this, he glances over at version Zero, who tucks his head further under his hood in embarrassment. Quite a few Crafty's Crafts locations have been built since then. I'm mainly stationed at our biggest one just next door. Maybe you should visit sometime. See how we've evolved. <sighs> yeah, right. Why would I ever want to go there? I don't even want to be here. Why not? We have so much more compared to what we had. It's our first location to utilize our brand new database system. Database system? It's a planned network which is going to connect all Crafty's Crafts locations to a central database located right here. All files, all uploaded employees, they will be able to be picked up and used from anywhere across the country. 
Just imagine the potential, the speeds that we can run Crafty HQ! It's like you don't even know what is sacrificed to make all this happen. Innocent people are being taken and locked away inside these suits. I can't even imagine how Peter and Adam must feel in there. Peter? Adam? You don't even remember Adam? He was literally with us when we worked together! I... I don't know any Adams. But... What? Ah, uh, he's ready for you. Until we meet again, Ethan. Chris reaches forward and pushes the large double doors open, escorting Ethan and version zero inside before exiting and shutting them in. They were in a large office, which had cables and wiring streaming across the walls and the floor. To their right stood some large servers, along with a computer, and to their left stood a row of display cases, each holding some old 1930s film reels. In front of them sat the mysterious man behind the desk. He was roughly in his forties. His graying hair was swept up to a point. He wore a black pinstripe business suit with a yellow dress shirt underneath. Although he was dressed very professionally, he had a bit of an unkempt stubble beard, as well as tired wrinkles under his eyes. As he was writing on a piece of paper, he looked up and noticed both of them. Upon this stare, version zero began to tremble. Ethan Jones, you have no idea how long it took me to make this meeting happen. I take it that you're Sam, right? That's right. Please, take a seat. It's nice to see my original mascot back, too. He glances over at version zero who is still trembling and avoiding eye contact. I got your letter. I only came here because you threatened my family. Well, you're a tricky man, Mr. Jones. I had to get you here one way or another. Please, just call me Ethan. You know, I don't think you've realized how many complications you've caused for my business. Losing Crafty the Bear here really set us back. It doesn't seem like it, and he prefers to be called Version Zero. Well, that makes sense. He was a prototype after all. At least we have replacements for him now. If you hadn't kept on to him all this time, then Crafty HQ would have progressed so much further than it has. We've basically had to start from scratch. But sir, he's not just a suit. He's been living a life with me and my family for years now. He's alive somehow! I'm already aware of that. Who is Version Zero? Do you know? Of course I know. I'm the one who created him, after all. Then who is he? Who he is has no importance to this meeting. Right. Well, at least me keeping him has stopped you from doing more disgusting things to employees. <laughs> what makes you think that? What? What do you mean? You see that door just over there? The one in the corner? He points over to a door, which was tucked away in the corner of his office. It read, Termination Room. That room is the thing keeping this company alive. There's a machine in there which is pushing this business higher than it could ever reach before. So why do you even need us here then? Why do you need version zero? I have hundreds of employees across the country that work for me. But not one of them is as determined as you. It's almost like your superpower. And why is that important? I know you're not caught up with the company, so... Allow me to fill you in. For quite some time now, We've been working hard on the Crafty HQ database project. It's a sort of wide area network that connects every Crafty's Crafts establishment in the country. I heard. The leftover consciousness of inactive employees are uploaded to these servers here, allowing every chain to access and use them as they please. The project had been going smoothly so far until I was alerted by one of our technicians that there was suspicious activity hidden within the code. We discovered a virus that was laying dormant and activated once we found it. It's eating away at our data as we speak. Unfortunately, we can't slow it down from the outside, no matter what we try. The only way we stop it is for somebody to be uploaded and destroy the virus manually. Right? And which of your poor employees are going to be doing that, huh? That poor employee is you, Ethan. Oh no. No, that is not happening! 
Why would I ever help you? Oh, I'm sure I can change your mind. I think there's somebody who wants to speak with you, Ethan. What? Sam gets up out of his chair and strolls over to the servers on the other side of the room. After flicking some switches, a familiar voice speaks. Hello? I is he here? Does he, does he want to talk to me? Peter? Ethan? Is that you? Oh, it's been such a long time. Come on, Ethan. Talk to him. Does he not want to talk to me? He never wants to talk to me. That's not Peter. Oh, yes it is. I'm directly outputting his backup's consciousness. This is your brother speaking out to you. This is your chance to talk to him again. Uh, I'm sorry, Peter. I shouldn't have brought you to Crafty Crafts on that Hello? day. Is he still there? He can recognize your voice, but the virus has eaten away the part of his consciousness that recognizes speech. If you help me contain it, we can recover him. Maybe I could even let you talk to him properly again. No, I don't care what you say. I'm not helping you. <sighs> Very well. I want to go home, Ethan. Please don't leave me alone again. As the line is shut off, Ethan remains completely silent and unwilling to talk anymore. Sam walks over to the display cases, opening one of them up and removing one of the film reels. Crafty HQ really has a rich history, you know. He goes over to a small projector on his desk, inserts the film reel, and plays it. On the wall of his office showed a vintage 1930s film. A cartoon Crafty the Bear skips down the street. His movements fluid and rubber hose. He had his star wand in hand and his usual large grin on his face. Ah, <sighs> I remember watching these as a small kid. Sat on the floor of our small apartment in New York, wasting my time away. Sam circles around the room as he speaks. He picks up a long wire and plugs it into the database. What fun those cartoons were. It's a shame most of them are lost to time now. I've kept some of the only ones remaining. Version Zero stared up at the cartoon playing, mesmerized by it. He'd never seen them before. Yet, this dancing cartoon bear seemed to bring him so much amazement. Sam eventually continued to circle behind him. What do you think of the cartoon, huh? Don't want to talk anymore? You'll want to talk after this. Sam took the other end of the long wire and forcefully plugged it into version zero. He flailed his arms around, desperately trying to pull the wire out. But Sam held it in. His head crashed and jolted about. No! No! What are you doing to him? Ethan lunged towards Sam, trying to pry him off version zero. Stop it! Version Zero had fallen silent, his body slumping back into his chair. His eyes had become dull and bleak. Version Zero! Version Zero! What did you do to him? What do you think? Get him out of there! Give him back! You should have just listened and got the job done. Now, I'll ask one last time. Are you going to help me? Or are you going to let your brother and your best friend be erased. I... I can't believe you'd do that. What did he ever do to you? Plenty. Sam leads Ethan to the previously mentioned door in the corner of the room. He unlocks the door with a keycard, before swinging it open and letting him in. The room was pitch black, and a familiar scent lingered in the air. I know that smell. The lights flickered on, revealing two large copper tankers that held the same mysterious gas that version Zero had. The walls and floor were white and sterile. Hundreds of wires flooded towards the center of the room, where a large steel chair with straps on the arms lay. Some sort of contraption hung from the ceiling and was pointed towards the chair. Welcome to the heart of Crafty HQ. What the hell is this? Well, 
after you took away my original suit, I had to start from square one and construct a new way to create order in the company. Have an employee who slacks off? Just call them here and increase their motivation. Has somebody discovered what I'm doing? They're no use to me anymore. Just upload them into an animatronic to create the most realistic interactions with customers. Other employees are realizing that somebody on the team has gone missing with no warning. That's easy. Just cut out their memory from them. Everything which happens in this room boosts employee productivity, increases customer engagement, and covers it all up at the same time. That's just terrible. Without this room, my business wouldn't even be half the size it is today. Now take a seat on that chair. Ethan strolls over to the chair in the center of the room and reluctantly sits himself down onto it. Sam begins to activate various switches and buttons from a large control panel on the other side of the room. I can't believe I'm doing this. You'll believe it soon enough. I'm going to upload you into the central hub of the system. How do I even know what to look for in there? How do I navigate around? <laughs> I have no idea. I've never been in there before. Sam pushes a large red button, which begins to activate the machine. The contraption hanging from the ceiling begins to whir and vibrate, powering up. It was nice meeting you, Ethan. Hopefully we'll be able to meet again sometime. The air felt cold and thin. Eventually, with enough strength, he managed to open his eyes. He was looking down on the floor to see red carpeting. As Ethan gathers the strength to get up off the floor, he tries to get his bearings. Before him was a corridor that was in the exact same style as the Crafty HQ building. I'm still in Crafty HQ? Crafty the Bear paintings covered the walls, but they appeared pixelated and flickered in and out. Fluorescent lights and large cables lined the ceiling, along with various doors on either side of the corridor. Ethan goes over to one of them, which displays a small sign that reads, Marketing, as well as a small red light on the wall above it. He tried to open the door, but it was locked shut. This can't be right. Ethan warily continues down the corridor. He turns around to find that as he proceeds down it, chunks of the wall, ceiling and floor behind him, unload and delete. Ahead of him was the opposite. Chunks would load in as he went forward. As he passes each door, he reads the sign alongside them. Advertisements. Digital posters. Profit spreadsheets. They seem to be endless. Eventually, Ethan spotted the sign which caught his attention. It read, Mascot Employee Backup. Noticing that it had a green light next to it, he approached the door and opened it. It led to a large office room. Both walls had rows of large pods, which each contained a person who was trapped inside, permanently asleep. They appeared pale and frosty, almost as if they'd been cryogenically preserved. They each had a small monitor on them that read a different version of a Crafty the Bear mascot, along with an employee ID. Ethan continued through the room, stopping as he reached the first pod. Oh my god. Inside the pod was Adam. He appeared much more frosted over compared to the others how long he'd been in there, and he hadn't aged at all since Ethan last saw him. I'm so, so sorry, Adam. As Ethan placed his hand on the glass, the pod's door shuddered and whirled before opening up. Adam flopped forward, oh. Ethan catching him in his arms. Whoa! Hey, I've got you. It's okay. Where... where am I? Uh, I don't know. I think we're in the database. Ethan? 
He lunges forward, hugging him. Oh my god, it's really you! I'm glad to see you again. Hang on. Database? Is this place... all digital? Yeah, I don't really know how it works. We're inside the main server of Crafty HQ, but for some reason it's like a whole other world. Wait, if you're here, then that means they used that sick suit on you too! Well, not exactly. But... what? It's a long story. What do you mean? How long have I been here for? Well, since you were uploaded, about a decade. Ten years?! But... you can't be serious! Unfortunately, yes. But... my mom... and, and my friend... You're telling me that they've been living their lives this whole time? Without me? I'm so sorry, Adam. If we can get out, then we can try to look for them. We can show them that you're still alive. No. It's okay. It's probably for the best that they forget about me. Oh, don't say that. I'm sure they'd want to see you again. Ethan suddenly notices one last pod in the corner of the room. As he approaches it, he sees the mascot number red. Prototype version. Version Zero? Who? He's the original crafty mascot from when we first met. The one that you were in. Ethan peers inside the pod, but the frost on the glass obscures the identity of the person inside. He tries to open the pod's door like he did with Adam's, but it was locked tightly shut. The damn thing won't open! It must have just started backing up. Come on, Ethan. We should try and look for a way out. But I... Ethan glances back over to version Zero's pod, intrigued by what lay inside. But he was here for another reason. You're right. Let's go. The end of part one. To be continued.